Well, it's finally time for the next YouTube project. I just picked up this 2013 Subaru BRZ dirt cheap. I should have filmed going and getting it. It was actually three and a half hours away, fun little trip. Now, I got a dirt cheap because, of course, the engine is blown up, which is pretty typical for these cars. Pretty sure it has a hole in the top of the block, but it did run and drive up onto the trailer, although it sounded absolutely terrible. So, yeah, the plan is going to be rip out the FA20, put in a 2JZ. This is a premium model car, so it has the keyless entry when you walk up to it, the doors unlock, push button start, dual zone climate, it has heated seats, and yes, it is an automatic. I plan on keeping it an automatic. I have the Toyota A340e out of my Supra. That is a pretty reliable transmission, and I plan on putting that in here. I'm gonna run everything with a Haltech Elite, so that will run the 2JZ, the new automatic transmission, and I'll be able to retain a lot of the factory stuff like the push button start, which will be pretty cool. I'm gonna part out as much of the car as I can. It has a full aftermarket exhaust on it that is actually a name brand. I got the stock exhaust with it, which is worth a decent amount of money because of the catalytic converters. So really the goal is to get the car for free. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. First step here is gonna be pulling out the FA20 and getting this thing ready to drop the 2JZ into. Just got the under tray off. It's absolutely covered in oil. Kind of expecting to find a hole in the block down here, but I think the hole is on top. It has these MXP headers, that's what I'm after right now. I'm gonna pull the full exhaust off of it and get it listed for sale. It has a aftermarket mid pipe as well, and it goes back to a muffler delete. Uh, there's a little bit of rust in this like radiator support. I'm not sure why, because the car overall is barely clean if you look at like the pinch weld. No rust to be found. Fasteners are a little rusty, but overall it's in pretty good shape. But yeah, that core support, I might have to do something about that. Probably paint it before putting the 2JZ in. All right, about to pull the bumper off the car and hopefully tonight the engine and transmission will be out of this thing. So I'll start with pulling the bumper, draining the coolant out, then trying to unhook everything. And I think it'll be pretty easy to pull this thing out with the trans connected. So let's get to it. Not sure if I had showed this in a previous clip, but these are aftermarket lights on this car. Some people have no business doing wiring. I don't really even know what's going on here. It's like the original turn signals in a bottle, but I think for our purpose, we're just gonna do that. This side is pretty much the same. I, again, I don't even know what is going on here, but I think the quickest fix is going to be cutting it and starting over. Found a piece of hose to fit on the radiator and it's not a bad setup. Might take a while, but at least it won't make a mess like most cars do whenever you try to drain the coolant. So pretty much no coolant came out of this. I squeezed the upper and lower hoses and nothing else is coming out. So that might be why it blew up is head gasket failure, burned a bunch of coolant, hydro locked it, who knows, hard to say. Uh, I think the next step is gonna be Figuring out the wiring harness where I need to unplug that at and fuel lines. So the hood does have to come off to pull the engine, but I have pretty much everything ready to go, either cut or disconnected. I did leave the drive shaft in. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it looks like I'll be able to pull this without moving the whole drive shaft, which has to come out eventually, but it was in park and the battery's disconnected. So.
So this is fun, the uh, drive shaft. When I came out, it smacked my oil pan and made a complete mess. I mean, it's like the Exxon Valdez down there. But I think the drive shaft is what was holding it in, so let's continue on. All right, with the engine out of the car, I think it is time to focus the attention on the 2JZ that is gonna be going in it. This is the 2JZ GE out of my Supra. It looks like it honestly belongs in a scrapyard, but I think I can get it cleaned up. You need the front sump oil pan for it to fit into the BRZ. And lucky for me, I got one on the shelf, which was from my IS300. So the first order of business is gonna be installing that oil pan. I need to get a couple parts for it. I need to figure out what I'm doing with the intake manifold. It looks like I'm probably gonna go aftermarket and it's probably just gonna be a cheapo eBay one, which is still $500. The biggest question mark is this has a distributor, which really gets in the way of a turbo and doesn't look the best. So I'm kind of exploring options for converting this to coil on plug but it's more complicated than that than just removing this because this is, I guess, the cam and crank sensor. So I believe you can get a, a plate that replaces the plastic part of this and then you can use that for your crank and cam signal. But the 2JZ GE has a weaker oil pump in it, which you can't really see, but the oil pump's on the front of the engine. I'm not sure how good that is gonna be for turboing this. I might wanna upgrade that to the GTE pump which the GTE pump has a crank sensor in it. And then there are a couple kits that would put a cam pickup on the cam gear, but those kits are pretty expensive. And this is a budget build. I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible. So I think I might just retain this for, for now and maybe convert the car to a proper digital cam and crank at some other point down the road, but we'll see how. Probably gonna do a eBay manifold. That's another question mark on this is hood clearance. I read a lot that some of the turbo manifolds that you can't fit a big turbo. I don't think there are any good cast manifold options for the GE, but I, I need to look into that because if I could do a side mount, I think I could fit a really, really big turbo. I've seen a couple pictures. Compared to my Supra, there is so much room between the strut tower and the engine because, you know, this was a boxer engine before, which are super wide. So that might be an option, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty. You need to get a flex plate and a torque converter for it as well. Probably try to get a higher stall torque converter, but again, I'm on a budget, so we'll see, see what I end up with. Uh, so if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of the BRZ build. The next video coming will be stripping this thing down, getting it cleaned up, and installing all the parts that I'm going to have to order for it.